Hey guys, we're back with a fully 3D printed vise. It's the latest in our PLA tool series. We've managed to print this with no support again. You can make this yourself. The files are free. They're up on Maker World, Thingiverse, and Cults 3D. We're going to go through the key elements of the design, how to set up your slicer to print it yourself, and then we'll go through assembly at the end. Let's take a look at the design considerations for this vise. The basic idea is turn the knob, one direction brings the jaws together, other direction moves them apart, and you clamp stuff between here. On the inside, we've got a threaded rod, and we needed to give it just the ability to spin in place, but not move back and forth, so that it's basically part of the fixed jaw, but it can spin. And as it spins, there's a threaded hole in the moving jaw. And depending on the direction, you either move it towards the fixed jaw or away from it. Now, to keep the threaded rod in place, we had to include this bearing piece to make sure that when you turn this, the threaded rod doesn't move, the jaw moves. So we needed to be able to push against this face. There's a flange on the bearing piece and a, a wall here on the fixed jaw that push against each other, and that opens it. And the underside of this head and the outside face of the fixed jaw are what we pull against to, to pull the jaws together. So we thread this bearing piece down over the entire threaded rod and it pushes against the underside of the face. And we torque it down really hard and friction keeps it in place. So now the knob, which is an interference fit, the thread and the bearing piece all move as one unit. And we can spin them together and these threads move the jaws. Now on the back, we have these dovetails running the whole length. And these are the guides to make sure that the jaws stay straight and move in a straight line as the threaded rod spins and pulls and pushes it. And the last thing is on the inside of, of these, these jaws are removable. There's a drafted boss that fits into a socket with an interference fit that keeps them in place. So you just kind of push them down like a Lego. And when you want to take them out or swap them, you've got a knockout hole from the back. And as soon as you move it at all, it, it lets go. Uh, but it'll stay right where you put it for as long as you want. Let's take a look at how to set these parts up on your print bed. As always, we're striving for no support, trying to avoid those ugly surfaces that support interfaces leave behind. We're gonna need some reasonably tight tolerances on this and we just don't want ugly surfaces if we can avoid it. For the fixed jaw, we're gonna arrange it like this so that the dovetails face up and that way we'll get the best definition on it because printers are most accurate in the X, Y and the, the Z's are gonna give you less accurate definition. We need very tight tolerances on these like we discussed for minimizing rotation in here and we'll get a nice round circle because this is the interface for the the od of the bearing part where the screw spins and we can face the socket for the jaw up so that it'll print nice and that interference fit will work and allow it to go together like a lego and we can print this overhang no problem with a 45 degree face so that'll come out looking nice the movable jaw we're going to face up and down for the same reason female threads we have to face vertical to print them otherwise you'd fill that with support and it would never work we want nice definition on these dovetails so that they'll slide nicely and we can keep the clearances very small. And we want to face this socket up so that we can print it. The knob, we want to face this socket up because uh, it's drafted and this way we have no support on that part. The threaded rod, we cut the sides off of it for this reason so that we can print it horizontal instead of vertical because parts are strongest in the XY and the, the Z moving up away from the table. The layers stuck together is always the weakest direction for a 3D print. So because we're gonna pull on this screw as we try to close the jaws and really clamp hard, we don't want it to be weak to just break in half. So we get nice, long, continuous sections of filament that add strength to this thing over a vertical print direction. The handle looks just like this. The, the jaw plates print with the face down so that we can print this post with the draft on it. And there's two versions, the flat one really isn't hard to understand, but the, the one with these grooves in it is, is printing them as overhangs so that there's no support under there because we can print out to close to 60 degrees, but we've held it to 45 here, which prints really nicely. So set them up like this, choose your colors, uh, choose your material. This is PLA when we did it. To make it very strong, you wanna up your wall loops because that'll make the part the strongest. And the other thing that you can do if you want it to be very strong is up your infill percentage. Um, as you get closer to 100%, the part does get more dense and it's stronger that way. But making the skin of the part thicker will be more impactful of a change. 
Here are all of the parts there are for this project. We've got a few options. We really only need one of the knob or the handle. You can print both if you want. Uh, same with the, the jaws. You really don't need both, but you have options depending on what you want to do with this. So step one in the assembly process is to get the screw attached to the, the large base. And to do that, we're gonna add in this bearing component that's gonna screw down all the way until it touches here. And then this spins as a unit inside. That's what allows us to act as a vise. So we'll speed this up a little bit. So now that we're all screwed down, that took a little while, but we got there. We wanna hold the, the bearing piece really still and screw it down as tight as we can. And now when we spin the bearing piece and the, the screw, spin as one unit. So next we're gonna fit the dovetail of, of the sliding jaw into the other dovetail and we're going to line it up and, and start to spin this way and this will bring the faces together so this is the action of the vise after this we're going to choose vise jaws to put in and we've got these nice tapered features that go into the corresponding slots you just place them in and push down and they'll stay so we'll put these flat jaws in for now and then we've got to make a choice about the knob or the arm Either of these is an interference fit. They have the same fit. Just push them on and they stay. And we're assembled. So if you want to make any changes, you just pull this knob off, which is a little easier said than done. It gets a pretty good stick on there, but if you pull straight out, it does come apart. We could change it for an arm. The only drawback to the arm, it will certainly give you more ability to twist this thing tight, but you can't make full revolutions if it's sitting on the edge of a desk. You're gonna to have to hang it off the end once it's up in the air, you can get full rotations. The knob will allow you to spin it right on the bench. If you want to change these plates, you just pull them out. That's what the knockout hole is for. In case they're stuck, you can put a, a screwdriver in there or something and just tap them out. As soon as they move, they let go. We can swap these and put in these groove jaw plates that will hold some kind of a round part. And we should swap this. Just for demonstration's sake, we can hold on to round parts. And that's the whole thing. We're together. Now we've got a working vise. I hope you found this fun and useful. If you have any ideas for upgrades or additional features, let us know in the comments. And be sure to subscribe for future content.